Welcome. Welcome to worship with Kern Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I'm the Reverend Jim Bales, an interim pastor, and it is a delight to welcome you to this time of worship and praise. Today and this week, we celebrate Transfiguration, celebrated by the church on the final Sunday in the Epiphany season, and today through music, scripture, and message. We pray that God will lead us into this majestic, glorious, mysterious, and very revealing experience of our Lord Jesus on a mountaintop. This coming Wednesday, March 2nd, uh, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the sacred Lenten season. Lent, the 40 days, not counting Sundays, preceding Easter Sunday. And Kern Memorial Church invites you to the traditional Ash Wednesday service, Wednesday evening, at 6 30 in our sanctuary again thank you for joining us to this time of worship and praise we pray that you will be blessed The call to worship, the Lord is sovereign. Let the people tremble in awe. God is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. 
and is high above all peoples, proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship Yahweh upon the holy mountain. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks that you invite us to lift our concerns and burdens and also thanksgivings to you. But also we thank you, O oh God, that, that you lead us to have concerns for this your world in the peoples and circumstances of this your world. We remember you blessing Abraham and, and calling him to be a blessing to all the nations. We remember you calling uh, your servant in Isaiah that it was too light a thing to be a light only to Judah uh, and Israel, but to be a light to the nations. And we remember... Jesus himself saying, God so loved the world. And gracious God, this day, this week, we confess that we are a troubled world. And we pray for the peoples, your people, in this your world. Gracious God, in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Ukraine. 
We pray for their safety. We pray for their security. We pray for their well-being. Gracious God, we pray that you would melt hearts, change hearts, that you would transform world leaders into being leaders of peace, that you would give us the hearts that would even know the things that make for peace. Oh, gracious God, as we at times seem so overwhelmed at world circumstances, enable us always to believe that you are the Lord God of history, that you are the Lord God of the world, and that your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gracious God, as we turn to you, as we turn to your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray together his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Christians, we follow the call of our Lord Jesus Christ. We follow in his footsteps we follow in his example of a loving, giving heart and a loving, giving life. We express our love for Christ in many ways, including through our giving. As we come to the invitation to give, I remind you that you may give online through kernumc.org. You may mail your gift uh, to the church. You may bring your church gift uh, by the church and place it you know, through the front door. Or you may give um, a special uh, philanthropic gift. We give as Christ has so given to us. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, Gracious God, we pray that doxology is at the heart of our worship and at the core of our lives. We do praise you. We do give glory and honor to you. Through our hearts, through our lives, and through these, our gifts. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. I see the cloud. I step in. I want to see your glory like Moses did. Flashes of light and rolls of thunder. But 
I'm not afraid I'm not afraid Show me your glory Show me your glory My God Show me by your beauty lost in your eyes I long to walk in your presence like Jesus did your glory surrounds me I'm overwhelmed But I'm not afraid I'm not afraid Show me your glory Show me your glory reading from Exodus 34, 29 through 35. When Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. 
Now I'm reading from Luke 9, 28 through 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him, and he went up onto the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And one additional verse, Luke 9, 37. On the next day when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. The Knoxville News Sentinel about a month ago ran a feature article on the ways people come to faith. The many diverse ways people come to faith, seemingly at times polar opposite ways of coming to faith. The article summarized this with one well-known couple, Ruth Bell Graham and Billy Graham. Ruth Bell was born in China in 1920. Her father was a Presbyterian medical missionary in China. And Ruth Bell Graham recounted that she never had a, a single defining Christian experience. She was raised in the faith, for the faith, and she cannot remember not being a Christian though the whole world would affirm that she certainly was. Billy Graham, conversely, says that he happened to attend an old-fashioned revival meeting led by the flamboyant evangelist Mordecai Ham. Billy Graham recalled that in the middle of the revival sermon, Mordecai Ham pointed at him in the midst of the crowd, and said, you are a sinner. And Billy Graham said at that moment, he repented. At that moment, he accepted Christ into his heart as Lord and Savior. And Billy Graham forever remembered uh, that stadium, that preacher, uh, that moment. And he called it a mountaintop a mountaintop spiritual experience. There are numerous mountains in Scripture. There are numerous mountaintop experiences in the Bible. God so often appeared atop mountains and that many of God's biblical epiphanies, appearances, happen on the mountain. A few weeks ago, we discussed uh, Moses and God on, on Mount Horeb and God speaking to the burning bush and his call to Moses. Uh, we heard read today of, of God and Moses, of Moses being on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights with God. God and Elijah were on Mount Horeb uh, or Mount Carmel. 
Later on, we remember Jerusalem being called Mount Zion. And we use the term um, you know, metaphorically of a high lifted up spiritual experience, an experience of religious glory, and here in these scriptures, certainly such an experience for Jesus in what is called the transfiguration. Here in Luke 9, Jesus is well into his public ministry. We're just a little over one-third of the way through the gospel. But Jesus has just heard, told his disciples that it was necessary that he would suffer, that he would be killed, and that he would be raised. And of course, they did not believe it. But eight days after this teaching, we heard read that that Jesus goes apart, as he, he often did, sometimes by himself, sometimes with all of his disciples, sometimes with a small group. And here it is Peter, James, and John. And they go atop this mountain. And while there, they had this incredible experience. Jesus' appearance changes drastically. Jesus' raiment becomes a dazzling white, a radiant uh, white. There appeared Moses and Elijah representing the, the law and, and the prophets. Then there is a, a cloud, a, a mysterious cloud uh, covers them. And we know so much of the time in the Old Testament, a cloud was not a weather condition. But this was the Shekinah, the divine cloud, the cloud symbolizing the mysterious presence and coming and going of, of God. And then, in the midst of it all, a voice coming out of the cloud, a familiar voice, a, a voice we have heard before, the voice saying to them, This is my son my beloved son, listen to him. The mountain, Jesus, his appearance, Moses, Elijah, the cloud, the voice, an incredible moment of glory. And Peter speaks up. And Peter says, Jesus, let us build three booths up here. You know, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Let's not make this a day trip. Let's not make this a, a momentary experience. But let's, let's stay here. Let's, let's stay a while. Let's remain in this divine glory. Let's bask in this divine glory. We certainly identify with that, don't we? That if we indeed have experienced spiritual mountaintops, and many of us can recall by the grace of God not just one such experience, but perhaps numerous ones over our lives, we wanted that experience to, to continue. We did not want it to, to end. We, we wanted to stay uh, you know, where we were and, and, and stay uh, right there just basking in our experience of God's closeness and, and God's love. But that verse, on the next day when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them. And we immediately read about a father and a son. And his father and his son is desperately ill and he's having um, convulsions and he's, uh, he's shaking and, and convulsing. And Jesus would not stay on the mountaintop. But Jesus felt called by God to proceed down the mountain 
back into the fray. To people. And immediately being met with troubled people in their need. And immediately responding with grace, compassion, and healing power. Oh, how again we would love to stay on, uh, on the mountaintop. And we realize that those spiritual highs, if we can use that term, do not remain the same forever. And as, we, as our souls may come down the mountain a little bit, or maybe a lot, we may doubt our faith, we may uh, doubt that faith experience, we may even doubt God. But Jesus felt called to come down the mountain. Jesus was blessed with a mountaintop experience. But from that, he was called back down the mountain into the midst of, of human need. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, experienced a profound spiritual mountaintop on May 24, 1738, in what we call his Alders Gate experience, when he wrote that he felt his heart strangely warm. Uh, an incredible uh, single night experiencing spiritual assurance for the first time in his life. Certainly, we would call it a mountaintop experience. But John Wesley was called back down the mountain. And exactly a year later, in May of 1739, John Wesley was invited by his friend George Whitfield to preach in the open air, to preach outside a consecrated Anglican church building, and to preach to non-church goers in a very non-conventional way. And John Wesley was called down the mountain uh, to a place of, and a style uh, contrary to his experience, far out of his comfort zone. John Wesley met opposition down at the, at the bottom of the mountain. And some people didn't want to hear the message, and they hurled rocks or vegetables at him or, or others. But John Wesley came down that mountain and served God in the middle of the fray and God's people needing Christ. And they were blessed, and Wesley himself was transformed. Diedrich Bonhoeffer, the young, world-famous uh, German Lutheran pastor, had made a second voyage to uh, the United States, to New York. And as, as soon as he landed, he knew he had made a mistake and that he needed to return to, uh, across the Atlantic, back to his suffering and periled people in Germany. His American friends implored him to stay, uh, to save his life, and implored him of all the good that, that, that he could do. But no, uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer felt called to leave the, the mountain of American safety and come down the mountain and to return to, uh, to Germany. And there, as we know, he led a resistance effort against Hitler and was arrested and spent over a year in the German prisons and was executed in April of 1945. There's a young attorney named uh, Doug Kilday, now an attorney in Austin, Texas. Doug Kilday was partly raised in, in Oak Ridge. His father was the Reverend uh, Bill Kilday, Associate Minister at 
First United Methodist Church of Oak Ridge uh, in the mid to late 70s. He was the brother of Kathy uh, Gillen Waters of Oak Ridge. Doug Kilday was a successful attorney in Austin, Texas, member of the First Presbyterian Church in Austin, a member of their missions committee. And there they, uh, they supported a, a, a ministry uh, that, uh, that fought human trafficking across the world, a ministry that would send uh, lawyers and social workers and, and educators and others into Cambodia and Africa and other places. A representative of that organization came to Doug Kilday's church, and, and he heard about uh, the pressing need for uh, an attorney to help train the Cambodian attorneys, and the previous attorney had been killed by the uh, Cambodian army. And Doug Kilday kept on listening and listening that, that they need attorneys, and we have a lot of attorneys in Austin, Texas, he said. We have a lot of attorneys in this uh, large, affluent church. And then the call came to Doug Kilday. And Doug Kilday, a few years ago, took his wife and young children from the mountaintop safety of Austin, Texas. And they came down the mountain and spent over a year in a highly dangerous area of Cambodia doing highly dangerous things. And Doug Kilday was in on the successful prosecution of numerous human traffickers. It was April 3rd, 1968. And Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, that night in Memphis, Tennessee, said, I've, uh, I've been on the mountaintop, and I've seen the promised land. But troubled days are ahead, and longevity has its place. And Dr. Martin Luther King long ago, before then, had left the security and safety of the spiritual mountaintop and been called back down the mountain you know, into the fray, you know, into human need and human injustice. And less than 24 hours later, you know, he was killed. But there are others, there, there are so many others who have, have left a mountaintop or perhaps a place of safety and, and security and have been called by Christ down the mountain to serve and to give and to care. This past week, I've been in Methodist Medical Center in Oak Ridge, you know, several times. You know, going into the uh, emergency room lobby, it was filled. And then going into the uh, emergency room, not only was each emergency room filled, but there were several uh, patients that were in hospital beds out in the hall with, uh, with signs taped on, on their bed, bed patient number three, bed patient number four, and the staff, the, the incredible staff, and especially the, the nurses and aides that they were going around with, with such dignity and, and such service. One of those days visiting there, a Methodist Medical Center nurse was, was televised, and, and she talked about, was interviewed on television, and, and she spoke about this past year. And we praise and, and honor the health professionals and others who have left perhaps the mountaintop safety and security of their homes and have come down the mountain and, and entered the fray of, of human life and, uh, and human need. And 
And God granted Jesus this moment of glory. What we call the transfiguration on the Mount of Transfiguration. But Jesus, after a day and night there, was called to come back down the mountain into life, into the fray, into the world of people and their needs and their hurts. And oh, we thank God that Jesus did. And the same Jesus continually calls us, say, come, follow me. Not only accept me as your Lord and Savior, but follow me. Follow me up the mountain, but also follow me back down the mountain. Follow me. And Moses went up, and Moses came down. And Elijah went up the mountain, and Elijah came back down. And Jesus went up, And Jesus came down and says, come, follow me. Will we do so? Will we continue to do so? By the grace of God, in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, will we do so? May we pray. Oh, gracious God, how we thank you that these Jesus experiences indeed were remembered and later were told. Had it been told in various ways down through the ages, including to us and hopefully through us to those coming long after us. Enable us to experience something of transfiguration. That you do grant us various wondrous grace experiences of true spiritual height. But also grant us, O God, to go where you would lead us, even and especially if it's back down the mountain. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship. Worship with Kerr Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And may the Christ who invites us up the mountain and invites us back down the mountain and who is with us each step of the way bless you and keep you this day and all days forever. Amen. Thank you. 